Guys, we are back with another pitch design video. Let me tell you, on the journey to perfecting pitch design, you're going to run into a ton of roadblocks, but it shouldn't be because you don't understand certain metrics. All of these new technologies spit out tons and tons of information for every single pitch, but what does all of it mean? Sometimes you may feel like you're doing a great job, and the next day, not so much. On this channel, I try to cover everything you could ever need to understand about the advanced player development tactics going on out in the game today. And today's episode is no different. We've covered similar topics to this one in the past, speaking of gyrospin and spit efficiency, but today we're taking it one step forward. What is gyro degree? How is it measured? And why does it matter? All of that and a ton more in today's video. Welcome to Simple Saber Metrics, the brains behind baseball's latest data-driven revolution. If this is your first time here, and you want to learn more about the practical applications of baseball's latest technologies and training techniques, join the movement now by clicking the subscribe button down below. Before we can begin to dive into the topic of today's video, we first need to recap what exactly gyrospin is. Most of the time, when you hear talk about pitch design, people are only speaking in two-dimensional terms. To oversimplify things, when a ball is traveling away in this scenario, we look at the axis the ball is spinning around and use terms to describe it such as spin axis, tilt, or spin direction. In reality, there are three dimensions that have a component in the movement profiles of each pitch. When you're looking at a pitch from a bird's eye view from the top down, there are several axes that it can spin around that aren't two dimensional. And these changes have a significant impact on the amount of movement each pitch may have. You can imagine that perfect gyro spin from behind is like looking into a washer or drying machine spinning around and around one single point in the middle, like a football being thrown with a perfect spiral. This is pure gyro spin, and we've talked about it and its relationship with spin efficiency before in a previous video, so if you need a refresher on all of that, check out the link down below. But in today's video, we are going to be looking into gyro degree, and in doing so, I'll be explaining why it is a step up in measuring gyro spin compared to spin efficiency. So first, what is gyro degree? Well, let's take a look at a similar snapshot of a single pitch looking from the top-down perspective. This pitch is moving from down to up, from the pitcher to the catcher. A pitch with zero gyro degree is released perfectly perpendicular to the direction of a pitch's movement. But as a pitcher's release point changes to slightly around the side of the ball, the gyro degree grows larger. In this case, you can see that the second pitch has a gyro degree of about 20 degrees. As the axis of the ball is spinning around moves to parallel to the direction it is moving, the gyro degree then climbs to its highest point at 90 degrees. Now, this is getting a bit messy, so let's clean it up so we can chat a little bit more about this. After you've grasped that idea, let's talk about how this number is usually displayed. Every pitch has a gyro degree, measured in degrees, as you'd imagine. It's measured further on a scale of 0 to 90 for righties, lefties then fall on the typical scale of 0 to negative 89, meaning that lefties numbers are almost always negative. A pitch rotating around this axis from our bird's eye view perspective would have a gyro degree of 45 degrees. For a lefty, a pitch with similar movement characteristics would have a gyro degree of negative 45 degrees. You get the point. So how is this different than spin efficiency, you may ask? Great question. If you watched my previous video on gyro spin, you'd understand that a pitch with a gyro degree of 0 would have a spin efficiency of 100%, and a pitch with 90 degrees gyro degree would have a spin efficiency of 0%. So after looking at that, you would assume that a 45 gyro degree would equal what? 50%, right? Wrong. It actually falls around about 71% spin efficiency, which may be misleading if you're working in developing a pitch. What this means is that the relationship between spin efficiency and gyro degree is not linear. And that's important. When talking about these two metrics, it helps to understand how each is measured. Spin efficiency is simply the cosine of the gyro degree times 100. For me, that gives us a general number that represents the total amount of useful spin that a pitch may have, but it isn't giving you the exact reason for why it may not have the characteristics you want. In my opinion, gyro degree is more important in the pitch design process than spin efficiency. Although it is a little more confusing to understand at first, it paints you the whole picture of what is going on on each pitch. I mentioned earlier that righties typically have a positive gyro degree and lefties typically have a negative gyro degree. 
and the typically part is important. Let me explain a little bit more on that by breaking it down in two ways. First, typically a righty's pitch will register with a positive gyro degree, and lefties with a negative one. These two pitches will have identical spin efficiencies even though they have different gyro degrees. But what happens if a righty throws a pitch with a negative gyro degree? It does happen from time to time. If you're just looking at spin efficiency, you may cue the athlete to pronate more to attain a higher spin efficiency when in reality, they may actually need to pronate less. Secondly, it's important to understand the math behind how spin efficiency is being calculated. And that means talking about a little bit of trigonometry. I promise it won't be that bad. Looking at this graph of cosine, the horizontal axis represents gyro degree, and the vertical represents spin efficiency. Our boundaries in this case stop at 90 degrees and negative 90 degrees since our gyro degree figure never surpasses that mark. The peak of our line falls at 1, or 100% spin efficiency, at the zero gyro degree mark. The main reason I want to show you this graph is to help you understand why gyro degree is going to provide you with a more accurate understanding of a pitch's movement profile than spin efficiency can. If you take a pitch with a 90 degree gyro degree and take approximately 20 degrees off of that pitch, you'll see a relatively large jump in the distance between the two points vertically. That represents a large change in spin efficiency. However, if you add that same 20 degrees of gyro spin to a pitch with a zero gyro degree, you will notice a relatively small jump in your spin efficiency. This is why you see more drastic changes in slider spin efficiencies compared to fastballs, because it takes a larger change in gyro degree for the fastball to match the change in spin efficiency for a slider due to the slope of our line. See, that wasn't too bad, was it? If you're interested in learning more about gyro degree and its effect on pitches movement profiles, I can't promote an article Driveline did on this topic a while back enough. I'll leave a link down in the description. So we've covered what gyro spin means, and how gyro degree is measured, and even why it is a more useful variable than spin efficiency. But why should you go out of your way to understand this new variable? As you begin to finally grasp a firm understanding of spin direction and horizontal and vertical movement, you may think to yourself that you're getting pretty good at this whole 2D pitch design thing. But once you take a look at the next mountain ahead, you may be intimidated to take on the next step. 3D pitch design. I made this video so all of you aren't afraid to tackle that next challenge by supplying you with the tools of what some of these more complicated statistics may mean. If you're looking for ways to apply this, go check out my first video on gyro spin. My pitch by pitch breakdown from that video still holds true. But as you continue to dive deeper, and deeper into the rabbit hole. Eventually it would all click one day. You can add all of this new understanding to your toolbox. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see more simple saber metrics, please subscribe. Click the video on the left for more baseball animations or the video on the right to check out my new vlog. Leave a comment and a like down below to show your support and I will see you next Wednesday with a new baseball animation.